So we are he have uh, six uh, brilliant presenters and uh, young researchers of Vaivy Shastra. And this uh, Strijit, Avinash, Sanjana, Shri, Shriyansh, and Kashita. So let me give one small intro about all these uh, students. Uh, they are uh, upgraded to researchers now because for almost past uh, uh, one year, six months to one year, they are doing presentations regularly. Uh, so when we talk about Abhinash is one of the first set of members in the uh, research school. Then we have Strijit. Um, so most of them are sixth grade and above. Uh, let's start today's uh, presentation. The first presentation is going to be Strijit Niranjan on the topic asteroids. And he, he is from this company called Space Landers. Landers. And uh, his school is Trimis International School. He studies great six. So can you dis enable the um, screen sharing? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. So, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Imagine a scene about 65 million years ago. A group of dinosaurs are grazing around. All seems peaceful and pleasant. Suddenly, a flash of light streaks through the sky. A few minutes later, there is a huge explosion and there is smoke, fire, and debris. The scene repeats all around the world. What just happened? Hello, everyone. I'm Srijit Niranjan, and, and I'm from Tremis International School, Bangalore. I'll be talking about asteroids, a group of heavenly bodies that are quite small. But uh, I think uh, there's someone watching uh, YouTube live close to you. I can able to listen to your YouTube live stream. Um, I think that would be my father, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so, so can I continue? Yes. Today I'll be talking about asteroids, a group of heavenly bodies that are quite small but pack a punch. Now, what are asteroids? As asteroids, also known as minor planets, are rocky, airless remains left over from early from the formation of our solar system about 6 4.6 billion years ago. Some asteroids can be irregularly shaped and some can be um, nearly spherical. Now, where can they where can they be found? Most of this ancient remains can be found in the asteroid belt, which is there between the Mars and Jupiter. Few of them can be found orbiting the planets. And rest of them can be found beyond Neptune, the Kuiper Belt. So how are they formed? How are these heavenly bodies formed? Most of these asteroids are formed during the formation of Earth and other rocky planets. They were the they can all sorry, they are the debris which are which were left over 
after the rocky planets were formed. And the rest of them, like the small asteroids, were um, formed by colliding with the, with the larger asteroids. So what was the first asteroid to be discovered? So the first asteroid to be discovered was Ceres. And it was discovered in 18, um, 1801. It was detected, it was found by, it was discovered by Giuseppe Pazzi, one of the celestial police. Yeah. So what are these asteroids made up of? They can be either made up of silicate rocks, minerals, or nickel iron. iron. Astronom astronomers say that the um, asteroids that are um, beyond Neptune can also have water. Now let's see the composition of asteroids. There are three broad composition classes of asteroids, and they are C, chondrite, which are made of, of clay, hardened clay and silicate rocks, the S type, which is made up of silicate materials and nickel iron, the M types are the ones that are nickel iron. Now let's see the asteroids classification. So the main asteroid belt. Um, the majority of asteroids are at the main asteroid belt, which lies between Mars and Jupiter. It's estimated to contain between 1.1 and 2 million asteroids, larger than one kilometer. Example of a main asteroid belt, asteroid from the main asteroid belt is Vesta 4. Now, let's see the Trojans. These asteroids um, have an orbit with the um, planets. Like a few asteroids go with the Earth's orbit, the Jupiter's orbit, and a lot more planets. So an example of that is 624 hectare. Now let's see the near Earth asteroids. These objects have orbits that pass close by the ones of the Earth. An example of, they can also be called as Earth crossers. An example of the near Earth asteroid is one zero. 36 Ganymede. Now there's a fact over here. Did you know 469210, sorry, 469219 Camo Olivia Olive, an asteroid discovered on 20, 27th April 2016 is the um can be the most stable quasi satellite of Earth. It orbits the uh, Sun as well as the Earth. It's too distant to be to be a true satellite of Earth, but it's the best and most stable example of a quasi satellite. Now, how do these asteroids travel? When the asteroids collide with each other a bit more harder than usual, they move out of their orbits. Then they might crash onto the planets or the moons in our solar system, or they also have chances to move out of our solar system and go to other solar systems. Now, why do these asteroids travel so fast? They are, after they move out of the so asteroid belt, they, they are pulled by the sun because of its gravitational pull. 
and it can also move because of the planets nearby and the moon's gravitational pull. So that's how the planets are mo move fast. Now, what is the maximum speed of an asteroid? We have captured till now. The Sirtis Mill meteorite, which travels at a which has traveled at a speed of 64,000 miles per hour is the highest velocity we have directly measured from an asteroid so far. It was seen in the US, Western USA at November, on November 1st, 2006. Isn't that so fast? Why are these asteroids important to us? And are they important to us? Of course, yes, they are important to us because they, they help the Earth during its formation. They wiped up the dinosaurs, they made craters which are formed into lakes, they gave and still are giving us rare metals, silicate, minerals, and etc. from planets and moons. They served as the building blocks for, of life for all the planets, animals in the wo world. Now let's see the exploration of asteroids. Only a few space, robotic spacecraft have, have come to these asteroids, have encountered these asteroids. They are near Shoemaker, Dawn, Hayabusa 1, Hayabusa 2, and Osiris Rex, Osiris Rex. Now let's see the, the spacecraft near. The near is a near Earth asteroid rendezvous, rendezvous, rendezvous also known as near, which landed and orbited on the asteroid. 433 Eros. Dawn. The Dawn is a NASA spacecraft which was launched in 2007 to explore the asteroid named Vesta. The second is the second long, largest um, asteroid in the main asteroid belt. Dawn arrived at Vesta in 2011. It orbited and explored Vesta over a year. And it left Vesta and arrived at Earth in 2018, sorry, 2012. Hayabusa 1. The Hayabusa 1 is a Japanese space agency. Is a spacecraft from the uh, JAXA Space Agency, which are, um, it failed at its first attempt, and and then it took a small sample and took off again. And this is the re-entry of the of the spacecraft, which was captured by NASA. Can you see the video? So this is a live uh, capture by uh, NASA team. Hayabusa spacecraft is a Japan spacecraft, right? Is it? What's sure. so? Can you repeat? The, the Hayabusa is a Japan spacecraft? Or? Yes, sir. It's a Japanese spacecraft, but it was captured by NASA. Mm -hmm. And this is the model of the Hayabusa one. Now let's see Hayabusa 2. Japan's Hayabusa 2 was launched in December 2014. It was a six-year voyage to study asteroid Ryuju. Um, and to collect samples to bring 
back to earth for analysis also the hayabusa 2 arrived at the asteroid in 2000 in june 2018 so this is the video of hayabusa 2 and this is the model of hayabusa 2 so osiris rex it was this osiris rex is a nasa spacecraft which was launched in 2000 in 2016 september 8th it was launched to study the asteroid named bennu in 2018 and it collected a sample of dust and rocks and mm. On April 9th, 2021, the spacecraft took its one last look at Bennu before beginning its journey back to Earth. <coughs> it still hasn't reached Earth yet, but it will it's estimated that it will reach Earth on 2000 in September 24th, 2023. <coughs> One of the closest images of asteroid. So what can you repeat? Yeah, I guess that's the closest uh, image of uh, asteroid. Yes, sir. The uh, Osiris Rex. Yes, sir. So just give me a minute. I just played again. Like boot prints on the moon, NASA's Osiris Rex spacecraft left its mark on asteroid Bennu. Now, new images taken during the spacecraft's final flyover on April 7th, 2021, reveal the aftermath of the historic feat. The spacecraft flew within 3.7 kilometers of the asteroid, the closest it has been since the touch and go or TAG sample collection event on October 20th, 2020. During TAG, the spacecraft sampling head sunk 48.8 centimeters into the asteroid surface and simultaneously fired a pressurized charge of nitrogen gas. churning up surface material and driving it into the collection chamber. Four of the spacecraft's backaway thrusters launched rocks and dust during the maneuver as Osiris-Rex pushed back off into space. Multiple submeter boulders were mobilized by the thrusters into a campfire ring-like shape, similar to rings of boulders seen around small craters pocking the surface. The spacecraft will remain in Bennu's vicinity until departure on May 10th, when the mission will begin its two-year return cruise back to Earth. Ultimately, it will deliver the collected sample to the Utah Test and Training Range on September 24th, 2023. And this is the model of the spacecraft, Osiris Six. Now, did you know asteroids? So I got this question: Do asteroids have moons, like planets? More than one hundred and fifty asteroids are known to have a small companion moon, and sometimes have two moons. There are also binary asteroids, also told as double asteroids. in which two rocky bodies of roughly equal size orbit to orbit each other now let me test your knowledge okay, it's quiz time. time okay students are listening get ready so we have uh, uh, audience here yes straight ahead you can okay stop. sir so the first question is What are the three main classifications of asteroids? Students, you can answer in the chat box. You can put A, B, or C. What are the three classifications of asteroids? A, yeah, that can be a main asteroid, but near a near a cluster. Oh, we have a lot of people. Yeah, so asteroid. the correct answer is A, main asteroid belt near Earth asteroids and trojans. So the answer is A. I think a lot of people answer. I think most of them. Yes, sir. Twenty-eight. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, the second question. Which now, the is, second question is, which are the five main reasons asteroids are important to us? What are the five main reasons asteroids are important to us? <laughs> yeah, so the correct answer is B. <laughs> yeah, the correct answer is B. Now, which spacecraft has finished collecting samples from Bennu? And it and is on its way back to Earth. The, there are three options: Dawn, or Osiris Rex, and Neoshoemaker. Again, you all got it right. Which spacecraft have finished? Collecting? It's Osiris Rex. Not bad. <laughs> now, and when were we'll most? Yeah. And now, when were we'll most of these asteroids formed? When were most of the asteroids formed? Yeah, most of the asteroids formed at Big Bang. Most of the asteroids were formed during formation of rocky planets. There I can see. Yes, so again, you got it. You all got it correct. <laughs> now, which of these is the asteroid which wiped out the dinosaurs? This is an extra question. Mm -hmm. I didn't take okay, it. No. Talk about it which of these asteroids which wiped out dinosaurs? Oh. She is wondering. Okay, it's A. Yeah. Someone has put B. So the correct answer is A. Yeah. <laughs> Rakshan is saying, I'm not answering this. <laughs> He's on dinosaurs. So though. thank you, everyone. <laughs> now you can share this. Share your feedback about this presentation. Uh, this so you can click this, you can put this link in the chat. Yes, box. sir. I'm, I'm sharing it, sir. Yeah. Well done, Srijit. So, this is the first live uh, uh, Srijit is going. Let's give a huge round of applause for Srijit. Uh, thank you, Our next presenter is ready. Uh, he wanted to stay anonymous. That's uh, A D. Uh, uh, so, so that's like already reveal compound. AD, that's AD for you. And uh, I can reveal only few details of him. Like uh, uh, he studies grade nine. He's, he's the co-founder of this company called Space Eye. And he's going to take the topic, a tour of NASA Kennedy Space Center. Uh, to give few things about uh, AD, AD is a max guy. He's like Ramanuja. If you give one topic, he just uh, uh, he he just solves it like decimal sa solve one. Say if you ask how far is moon from Earth, how far is moon from Earth? So there will be some uh, ten to twenty decimals. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, he uh, he presented on presentation how to colonize Mercury. Then he has his own company, own plan. When he is going to launch anything. How is going to launch? So, just uh, when you get time, I'll invite you all just to look at his presentation today. Let's let's see his presentation. Yes, Avinash, you can start your topic. Yes, tour of NASA, NASA Kennedy Space Center. Yes, thank you, Jagu. Thank you so much. One minute. Yeah. Don't don't unmute yourself. So because uh, I like uh, yeah yeah. Thank you for helping me out there. Yeah. So currently I'm at my native, so the network is a little fluctuating. So in case if you are facing any issue and viewing, please inform. That'd be great. Yep. So let me present. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, 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 we can. Great. Resume share. Oh, sh there is something going on. Just a minute. I can see there, is some, there is some issue. Just a minute. Yeah, now I hope you can see my screen. Hmm? Yes. Okay, great. So, I can see one black hole kind of picture. 
Yes. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Avinash aka AD. I'm going to be presenting about a tour of the NASA Center. So before we go in, I just like to give a few guidelines. This is a journey that I take in year 2019. So I am not remember everything. Please do not pack your bags and head out somewhere at this time. Stay home and stay safe. Next, there might be some inaccuracies. The information that I'm showing to you is as of 2019. And if you have gone to NASA after 2019, please feel free to correct me. Thank you. Now, before I continue, I'd like to ask a question. How many of you have been to US, have been to the United States of America? Raise your hands. Even if you've not been also, no problem. Don't worry, I'm going to take you there right now. Okay. So some of you have been, some of you may not have. That's fine. So uh, out of those who have been, how many of you have been to Florida? Hmm? Oh, so all of you have been to Florida as well. Okay, great. Okay, two of you have been to Florida. Oh, no. Yep, so Rian has been to Florida. Great. Okay, so Florida is famous for what? What is Florida famous for? Many of you should know this, even if you've been to US or not, you should know this. What is Florida famous for? Anyone? Type in the chat box, please. Yeah. No one knows. No problem. It is NASA. Florida is famous for NASA. NASA's Kennedy Space Center and the launch. Launches take place there. So now let's start the tour. So this, I'm going to divide the tour into three stages. This is the first stage. On entry into Space Center, we saw a globe-like structure of the NASA meatballs. And then once we started entering, we saw the Kennedy Space Center. It was a fairly large complex with shops, food courts, and other space exploration activities. Just a minute, huh? First stage, on entry into the space center, we saw a globe-like structure of the NASA meatball symbol. NASA meatball. And then once we started entering, we saw the Kennedy Space Center. It was fairly large complex with shops, food courts, and other space exploration activities. Oh, again, you got me, <laughs> Yeah, from now on, I'm going to switch off my mic. I won't mute here. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, let me continue. As we headed even deeper into the space center, we saw the Hall of Fame and the rocket. I do not remember it. I do not remember the model, but it wasn't a space extract. Now she. Oh, I show. Keep it down. Oh. We saw so many astronauts, including Neil Armstrong, in the Hall of Fame. After exiting the Hall of Fame, we went to a bus station which took us to another building. Now the saw... is low. Oh, yeah. Just a minute. Now is it better? Yeah. Yeah. The mic is a little far. That's the reason. So, as we headed even deeper into the space center, we saw the Hall of Fame and a rocket. I do not remember the model, but it wasn't a space experiment. I was sure. I'm sure. We saw so many astronauts that is, Hologram, uh, not holograms, pictures such as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, the Hall of Fame. After exiting the Hall of Fame, we went to a bus station, which took us to another building where we saw all the recovered parts of Apollo 1 to Apollo 17, from Apollo 1 all the way to Apollo 17. After seeing these, after seeing all these parts, we headed to a meeting. You guys know what it is McDonald's for lunch. After finishing lunch, we headed to an auditorium for show, just presented by none other than astronaut Neil Armstrong himself. Well, you might be thinking, wait, he died in 2012 or 2011. No, yeah, actually he did. 
but it was a hologram presenting. It was a hologram of him presenting. So it showed a rover used on one of those machines. I think it's up to 15 or 16 or 17. It's one of those. Now, second stage. After quick exploration, we went to a small simulator, which simulated a rocket launch. It was completely occupied. Once it was uttered, the operators told us to put our phones and any loose items in lockers. After putting everything in lockers, we went to the simulator and sat down in us. The rocket launch was realistic. As the rocket moved upward or the simulator just tilted upward, the G force started increasing or the force acting on us, the gravity started increasing. And within a few seconds, we hit outer space. And that concluded the ride. We got out and started exploring more places. We also happened to see the restored space shuttle Atlantis. It was huge and hanging by a few ropes. After which we hopped on board the bus and headed back to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we also saw Falcon 19 on launch pad 39, which was scheduled to launch the Navy for leaving Orlando, which is 30th April. Well, it got postponed to May 4th. Now the last stage. After reaching Kennedy Space Center, we went, we headed out to buy some merchandise, but that never happened. Then we went and played a space shuttle landing simulator, which none of us were able to land. It was a fun time, but I hope you've had fun listening to this part of the presentation. Leave your feedback in the given form. I'll give you a form at the end of the presentation. This is not the end. You have to wait. So, some extra content. This is about NASA. Just one paragraph. But there's a twist. Wait till the end of the paragraph. NASA was established in 1958, succeeding the National Advisory of Committee of National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. The new agency was to, distinctly, to have a distinctly civilian orientation, encouraging peaceful applications in space science. Since its establishment, most space, uh, US space exploration efforts have been led by NASA, including the Apollo moon landing missions, the Skylab space station, and later the space shuttle. NASA is supporting the International Space Station and is overseeing the development of the Orion spacecraft, the Space Launch System, or the SLS, commercial crew vehicles, and the planned Lunar Gateway Space Station. This agency is also re responsible for the Launch Services Program, which provides oversight of launch operations and countdown management for uncrewed NASA launches. And here's the twist. Please remember all the vital information from here. There will be a quiz on the slide, and a few other slides at the end. Sorry. Oh. Avinash, are you there? So we got some issue, I guess. Yes, so that's a wonderful presentation on, I think he is sharing his, he visited this uh, NASA, then he is, uh, um, it's a different type of presentation as uh, Shudrit is saying. Students, you can give uh, feedbacks on uh, uh, Avinash, uh, presentation. So Shruti says it's a different type of presentation. Yes. So if anyone has any doubts, you can type in chat box as soon as Avinash comes in. We can... So Avinash is calling me. Yes, Avinash? What happened? No issues, no issues. No issues, no issues. So what I do, I'll ask uh, Sanjana to start the presentation now, or should I do wait? Jago, you can hold for a, okay. for a minute or two. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Avinash is joining quickly. The audience are listening to you. Right? Okay. 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 So yes. So, uh, so I am getting like uh, some feedbacks. Like it, I like his voice. Yes, it's very different. It's an awesome presentation. <laughs> so uh, Avinash is on call now. You can. Uh, can anyone want to ask question? You can raise your hands. I'll unmute you. We can able to listen to you. Who want to ask any? If anyone has any question, you can ask Harijit. Yes, sir. Yes, Harijit, you can ask your question. I'm thinking of past the stage or the second stage. I'm trying to clear that. Okay. And I saw that uh, when you uh, say that uh, so many uh, Space explore activities. You mm. when I entered, I did something you said, mm. and there's so many shops that that time mm. in that sentence. I want to know that give some example uh, that space explore activities. Ah, so I will ask the question is: How is it going to know? Is there any? Uh, you you mentioned you saw a lot of space explorer activities. You want to know what are those activities? Uh, for examples, or one or three. Uh, one or two examples. Okay. One or two examples. So yeah. one example is the launch, as I told earlier. Okay. Like, like a launch, the launch simulator. Okay. So that is one such example. And then the uh, then another example is whatever I told, space shuttle landing. So that is another example I've mentioned as well at the end. Okay. Right now my laptop's just uh, hanging. It will come in a minute. Oh, they are listening I'm to you. Trying to know. connect. <laughs> I'm trying to connect to my phone right now, and here the network's also not very good oh, in my native. So, oh, so they are listening to you. Yeah. So the answers for Harijit question are: well, there's a space simulator. What is the other one? You told space simulator and shuttle launch, uh, shuttle landing, shuttle, shuttle landing, landing shuttle landing. Okay. So students, there are any? Well, joint. Yeah. yeah. The okay, next person will be Sanjana. Once uh, Avinash finishes his presentation, we are Sanjana. In. Sanjana, are you here? Well, what I do, I'll pin you here so that it will be easy for you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be online. No, sure, no, sure. Sanjana, you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Sanjana, you join back. Uh, Madhyesh has a question. Yes, Madhyesh, you can ask your question. So, I'm actually put the reason up. Yes. I mistakenly put the raise hand option. Oh, you mistakenly put it. Okay. Sanjay has a doubt. Wait, wait, where is Sanjay? I'm searching for you, Sanjay. Okay. Sanjay, Sanjay. I'm just searching Sanjay here. Jaku? Ah, yes. You are in? Jago, I'm joining the meeting from my phone right sir? now. Yes, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you, Sanjay. Sir, uh, when I saw Rianch's topic, it was like uh, the largest galaxy of the world, sir. What does that mean? I'll present Pandra Pupara. But why is it the world, sir? I'll the it. universe is it coming, sir. You can ask him. <laughs> when he presents, you'll know the secret behind it. Okay, I think Avinash joined. Yes, sir, he joined. Okay, Avinash. Uh, Avinash, you can unmute yourself. Uh, hello. Uh, see, I'm currently on my own. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm actually on my phone. My laptop ran into some problem and restarted. So, if you give me one minute, I'm my laptop is already switching on. No, okay. If you give me a minute, I'll join quickly from my laptop. 
So till till your laptop switches on, you can discuss. You can yeah, you can dis you can shoot any question. Please. Yeah, I'm so, already. Children, online. you have any questions related to uh, like NASA? You can uh, ask him. Like when you visit NASA, like his presentation is related to what? Ah, so we have a question from Dia. Dia, you can unmute yourself. Students allowed in NASA? Um, I think so. Students, I think they are allowed. There are some kind of camps that take place. So yeah, I think they are allowed. I've gone there as a like a visitor. I didn't go there on any uh any like what do you see like a student like in case if I won something right you go, some there are some competitions where you win. You go to NASA. I don't go like that. I just went as a visitor. So I think, yes, students are allowed. I don't know. I have no idea. So Sanjana is asking how, how much is it for the two? No, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Oh. Light. <laughs> so Hema has a question. Yes, Hema, Hema you can unmute this. Hey. <laughs> okay. Sir, when NASA when NASA established in 1958, its name is NSA NACA. But how it's how it changed its name to NASA? Okay, so when it was established, it was called the NASA. Yeah. Yeah. Then it became NASA. Yeah. You need to ask Google. <laughs> you know that? Sorry, I don't think I can switch on my light. Hey, yeah, Vinash, uh, can we uh, continue our presentation on the, after a few minutes? Just a minute, Jagu. I'll, uh, if I don't join within the next... No, I should. I don't join within the next one minute, you can continue. Okay. I'm trying my best to. So you have an interesting question. When NASA, uh, uh, like, uh, they, they created this NASA in nine, uh, 1958. Oh, During that no. time, it's called NACA. Luxuate icon. Mm -hmm. Satya, he asking how many rockets NASA launched. Oh, fuse uh -huh. Most of the rockets are launched by you know, say NASA. Uh, like from till the first uh, till 1975, even until 1980, yeah. most of the rockets are launched by NASA oh, and uh, Russian space agency. Just a minute. My laptop. Yeah, I think you guys can continue. My laptop yeah, struggling. So once your laptop is fixed, you can let us know. Okay, Sanjana. Yeah, sure. Ready once now? my laptop Is there any? Oh shit. Sorry. And then I can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, okay. So, uh, let me introduce Sandana. Sandana is uh, grade 11 from Good Shepherd Matriculation School. Top is something very new. What is this chameleon's take on space? It is going to explain. Uh, let's welcome Sandana. Yes, Sandana, you can start. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. Uh, so, hi everyone, I'm Sandana. So, today I'd like to present on chameleon's take on space. So there will be a lot of Tamils, so for all the non-Tamils out there, don't worry, I'll translate it into English. To start with, uh, Thiruvasagam. Thiruvasagam is one of the oldest literary works that was written by that was written during the Sangam literature. And there are like many subcategories and categories under this topic. So I've chosen only one category under this, that is Thiruvanta Pagudi. Thiruvanta Pagudi means, uh, the word Thiru in this particular phase, uh, phrase means vast. Vanda means space. So, which it means vast space. So, the first stanza goes like Andam Pagudin Unda Pirakum, Alaparun Dharme, Varaparun Gachi, Undan Kundra Nindal Padarin, Nutro Rukodin, Mare Patti Vindana. 
this means that uh, the space is infinite it cannot be measured it also says that uh, the world started its prominence because of an explosion and that explosion cannot be measured it's, it also says that that's an intense uh, explosion it cannot be measured this was written like 2500 years ago okay and the big bang theory was proposed in the year i'll be getting it later so then now can you read it again one more time that Yes, sir. Unda pagudiyum, unda pagudi, unda pirakum. Alar perun dhanme, balan perun gachi. Ondren kondre, nindrel padirin. Nootro or kodi, mere patti virinda na. Okay. The last, the last two lines of this uh, first stanza is illure kadirin tun anu puriya. Siriyan waaga periyon teriyan. This says that uh, this says about the atoms and molecules. It also says the smallest particle that one could find in the world is an atom. It also says the reaction happens the the, re, the reaction that happens between the atom and the molecule. Uh, so he is Manika Vasagar, the one who wrote the previous poem that is Tiruma Tiruvasagam. He is uh, G U Po. I think you must have known this guy. He is. Uh, no, I think uh, in the background uh, the YouTube live is running. So one second. Can hear you double double. So one second. I did not expect this. Wow, I just went wow as soon as I heard this. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, so, as I'm saying, he is uh, Manika Basagar, the one who wrote Tirvasagar. And he's G.U. Pope, one of the greatest missionaries, the Christian missionaries. So, what he did was, uh, G.U. Pope, he came to India during the 1940s. Sorry, during the 1840s. He, do, he came during the 1840s. He translated Tirvasagar into English and then he went back to his place. Okay? And then in 1927, this guy, his name is George Demeter, the one who proposed the theory of Big Bang. So I hope you get the point that I'm trying to say. Like I don't want to say it like a prayer, but then I hope you get the point. Like the, Manika Vasagar writes the Big Bang theory in the sixth century, and then you end up having the theory of Big Bang, which is being accepted worldwide. That this guy was the one who wrote it till date. So the next is. Uh, so this is vanir these are like separate poem that is different this is separate different vanir visumbin konmin surinda bilangada nayir endrum thotrudu these two lines said that the sun was at the center and all of the planets were revolving around it it was previously believed that the earth was in the center and the sun was revolving around it but this line says that it was in it, it was in the earth but it was the sun which is the center of, center of the solar system and the last two lines of this uh, poem says like Vanam Murge Vayanguli Yedun Chudar Kadirka Indi Yedindam Ganavi Nayiru. This says that the sun is a big ball of fire. It cannot be, you know, it cannot be uh, touched. We can never get, you know, next to it. Next is, this is my favorite. So before moving on to this uh, poem, I would like to say something. Like the significance of Tamil poem is that... Uh, uh, the poet usually gives an example so that the reader understands it in a better way. So first I like to start with the example and then go to the poem or maybe I can do the vice versa. The Neeneri Visimit Malarvena Thiritharu Naan Meen Miraya Koon Meen Pola Malar Thalai Mantradum Palarudan Kurigi Kaiinum Kalathinum Meyura Thindi Perinjitthanar Purar Koda Thirunjerubin Igan Meen Penor So to talk about the example uh, the example that is giving is uh, there's a man who's like very brave, who's very like courage, is very strong. He's being attacked by a set of men. So what he does is he's just fight, he fights them back. He just wins the battle and he takes control over all those men. So that's the example. This example was given to the actual thing that is the sun is the brave man. You know the sun is taking control over all of the planets of the solar system, which is revolving around it. It's not only the planet's gravity, it's not only the elliptical path that makes it to stay in that particular position, but it's also the sun's gravity that influences the planet position. And that is what is being said in, said in this uh, poem. Next here comes my favorite Tirukural. As you all know, Tirukural was written like in the 6th century, but many people said that it was written during the 1st century. There's still a debate because the world is not accepting that it was written during the 1st century. So the first uh, kural goes like Sura Rindrum Air Pinidu Ulagam Adanal Ulandum Ulavet Talai. 
even though this quran predominantly says about the agriculture but what we have to note is surendra surendra means it it refers to the movement of the earth that is the rotation and the revolution the meaning of the quran is the world is revel the, the world is uh, you know taking the moment revolution or the rotation just because agriculture is happening so imagine tirukkular tiruvalluvar had the knowledge of you know this space in the first century where where like no technology there were no technology at the point of time like imagine like he was so knowledgeable he wrote a kural about it the last kural here is pirarkena murpagal seyil tamakena pirpagal taame varum this means the newton's third law basically uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction tiruvalluvar wrote it in a very spiritual as well as in a scientific way it is up to us to take in what aspect so all all of you must have uh, encountered this word ulagam uh, which means the world this word has come from the root word ulag which means rotation and revolution remember like the tamil is the oldest language in the world imagine people naming things because of the, because of the act that it did how knowledgeable how brilliant and intelligent they were but we just failed to recognize their works that is something that i want to tell it on behalf of like many many students so that's it thank you hope you all like my presentation if you have any doubts you can let me know oh i'm just amazed with the amount of uh, content the research and everything i think lot of people have already questions they want to uh, ask you uh, students who are want to ask questions you can just uh, type in chat box i'll unmute you then ask so harijit yes he said that uh, tirukural right uh, tirukural is a have a, uh, there are uh, so many things like a part there was divided as a part like in one on one part there are 10 uh, line 10 types of kurals uh, kurals are there uh, which type it is kurilada Oh, Sanjana, unmute yourself. Don't mute. Uh, so, as you said, like if I'm not wrong, there are like thousand and twenty-three Tirukkural written by Tiruvalluvar. So there are many subcategories. Like there are Marundu, which says like ten Kurals about you know medicine, and this particular says about uh, agriculture. So in the Kural, when the agriculture or the subcategory learning, if I pass it, I will get to know this. Can clarify? Okay. Next. So if anyone want to want uh, Sanjana to repeat any of the those verses, she can do that. Um, yes. Yes. If you have any doubts, you can ask. We expect uh, more questions from. Uh, I shall just go. Let's see. Copy please. <laughs> People have started asking uh, copy of the presentation already. Is there live on YouTube? You can also. message sanjana she is in the researcher group guys okay you can type your questions so anyone has any doubts you can raise your hands i am just amazed with the content the what she brought inside because people, uh, isha sadhana has a question sadhana i am going to unmute you you can just uh, type on your question Sadhana, can I unmute yourself and ask? Can you hear my voice? Yes, 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 we can. In the Tiruvasakam book, in which language did they write? In Tamil language or some other language like Sanskrit? Don't mind, don't mind. You need to open your heart. Unmute, unmute yourself. Not try now. Yes, sir. So sorry, sir. Uh, so you ask me like, in which language do you hope translated it? Ah, uh, Tiruvasam. Basically, she is asking whether it's Tamil uh, book or uh, Sanskrit. Tirukkural, Tirukkural. And this is Tamil book. It was translated. Tiruvasam. She is asking. Oh, Tiruvasam. Tiruvasam is a Tamil literature. It was. translated into english so that many people knew, know about it so that is the intention behind the translation which is known as modi pair in tamil then we have nivas uh, saying nivas i'll unmute you you can share your thoughts 
Voice unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Again, ma'am. Yes, Jagu, it is an awesome uh, presentation, Jagu. Yes. And um, I'm appreciate Akka. You said in Tamil, it was a very understandable and easy, awesome Akka. Thank you for uh, saying to us, Akka. Okay, so Avia, you can unmute. Thank you, thank you. That was really nice. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Avia, I have unmuted you. I have a lot of people messaging in chat box. I like your presentation. Can you let me chat with Sanjan? I have a Hey, chat panlanda. Chat is open. You guys can chat with everyone. Riyansh, great work. Nice, nice, nice. Super. I think Avinash is back. Okay, that's uh, let's give a huge round of applause for Sanjana. That's a brilliant presentation. I'm going to cut this part and separately also put it on uh, uh, Shastra because this this needs to reach a lot of people. Like people say, uh, certain, uh, this, this recent signs are like, I think 200 years old. From 1800, a lot of things explored. But for past 2000 years, we had a lot of knowledge, but it's not been explored. So I want a lot of people to explore that. So uh, Sanjana Yanaka on the first of the matter, can you repeat it? Yes, the sir. Big Bang Theory? Yes, sir. Can I screen share? Yes, yes, please. Under Pagadin, Unda Pirakum, Alabarin Tanme, Balakarum Gachi, Undre Kundri Nindrel Padrin, Nutro Rukodi, Mir Patti Vindana. And to give more information on Sanjana, she is a Bharatanatyam dancer. Right? Yes, sir. So she knows, uh, and uh, she is one of the interns. We are uh, taking her in for our new uh, thing we are trying to do. That's uh, Science through dance. So that news will be soon. Will be up. Uh, Shruti Rukmini saying that's what makes it even more special. Okay. Thank you, Sanjana. Let's uh, bring in our Avinash is back. Thank you all. Thank okay. you so much. Well, that was a great presentation, Sanjana. Um, wait, and can you are. see me? Yeah. Like, yeah, I can. That hear. was a great presentation, even though I didn't understand Tamil. I don't understand Tamil. Okay, wait, wait. Kalevani, you want to say something? Kalevani, you want to show, oh. talk to Sanjana? Sir? Yes. Yes, sir. No, my network, my charge is at 12%. Sir, every day, this time only class, sir. No, no, this is not class. This is a presentation for researchers group. Okay, class okay, only sir. update control, sir. Yeah, don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Okay. I know. Oh, you need to unmute. They mute funny as me. Okay. I know you can share. So we have three more presenters waiting Siri, Sriyans, and Kashika. Unmute Panam Dilia. Try now. Yeah. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, let's start this. Um, let's share the screen. Wait just a minute, huh? And so, okay. Unfortunately, my battery is very low right now. Okay. Charge. Finish it. Yeah, I have to finish it quickly. Um, yeah, I'm at X. Oh, shoot. It's running low. Just a minute. I mean, Ashok, you are getting some uh, feedbacks and the questions from the YouTube live as well. Sanjay Tana Beta, Vinash. Hello. Okay, next. Uh, Shirish, get ready. Are you there? Shirish, I am actually ready, sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay, let me pin you in the thing. Things are uh, going through a lot of major issues. Very serious. Uh, yeah.
Okay, Shirish. Welcome. So let me introduce Shiri. Shiri is the one who done the maximum number of presentations in Bio Shastra research crew. And uh, he is studying grade six Indian public school and he's part of Space Eye Company. And his topic is inner planets. I'm curious, what is this inner planet? I've heard about exoplanets, I have heard about, heard about the solar system, universe, galaxies, but what is this inner planets? Let's start, Shirish. You need to unmute yourself. Yes, unmute me. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, hi, everyone. My name is Shirish. So, today I'll be talking about inner planets. So, before going in deep into inner planets, let's just see the basics of what is an inner planet. An inner planet is a terrestrial planet, and there are four of them in our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They have relative sizes, and the inner planets, they show like uh, their composite in sizes, like they're all like, uh, how can I say, they're all together in each directions, like left to right and right to left. Well, the four inner planets. Unlike the outer planets, which have many satellites, Mercury and Venus do not have moons. Earth has one and Mars has two. Of course, the inner planets have shorter orbits around the sun and they spin more slowly. Geologically, the inner planets are all made of cooled igneous rocks with iron cores and all have been geologically active at least early in their history. None of the inner planets have rings, unlike the outer planets, Saturn. First, inner planet Earth. Although Earth is the third planet out from the Sun, this lesson will start here. We know a lot more about Earth. So what do we know about the comparison with the other planets? What are Earth's most distinctive features? This image of Earth was taken during the Apollo 17 mission to the Moon. Can you find the hurricane, a storm? spinning in the opposite direction from the hurricane. Yeah, so now Earth's surface and life. As you can see in Earth's vast oceans of liquid water, large masses of land is exposed and a dynamic atmosphere with clouds of water vapor. Earth is also has ice covering its polar regions. Earth's average temperature is 14 degrees Celsius, 57 Fahrenheit. Water is a liquid at its temperature, but the planet also has water in its other two states, solid and gas. The oceans and the atmosphere help keep Earth's surface temperatures fairly steady. So, this there are temperatures in all solid, liquid, and gas in our planet. As yet, Earth is only planet to not have life. The presence of liquid water, the ability of atmospheric to filter out a form of radiation, and many other features make the planet uniquely suited to harbor life. Life and Earth now affect each other. For example, the evolution of plants allowed oxygen, allow oxygen to enter the atmosphere in large quantities for animals to evolve. Meaning that the Earth has an atmosphere and it also has an ozone layer, unlike the other planets, and that uh, that is a big advantage for the living things on our planets. 
Although life has not been found anywhere else in our solar system, other planets or satellites may harbor primitive life forms. Life may also be found elsewhere in the universe. Earth's motion and its satellites. The Earth rotates on its axis per day. By definition, the Earth orbits the Sun once every 365.24 days, which is defined as a year. Earth has been has one large moon, which orbits Earth once every 29.5 days, a period known as a month. Earth's moon is the large is a, has a large moon orbiting. A terrestrial planet in our solar system, the moon, is covered with craters. It is also it also has large plains of lava. The huge number of craters suggests that the moon's surface is an ancient. This is evidence that the moon formed when a large object, perhaps a large planet like Mars, struck Earth's Earth in a distant past. Mercury. The smallest planet, Mercury, is the planet closest to the Sun. Because Mercury is so close to the Sun, it is obviously difficult to observe it from Earth, even with a telescope. However, the Mariner 10 spacecraft shown in the figure below, I did not put it, but yeah. I visited Mercury in 1974 to 1975. The Messages spacecraft have been studying Mercury in detail since 2005. The craft is currently orbit, orbiting around the planet where it is creating detailed maps. Messages stands for Mercury Surface Space Environment. Geochemistry and engine. The surface of Mercury is covered with craters like Earth's moon. Ancient impact craters mean that for billions of years Mercury hasn't changed much. Also, with little atmosphere, the process of weathering and erosion do not wear in the planet structure. The extreme temperatures. Mercury is close to the sun, so it can get very hot. However, Mercury has virtually no atmosphere, no water to insulate the surface, and it rotates very slowly. For these reasons, temperatures, the, surf, the surface of Mercury is fairly wide. The direct sunlight uh, surface can be hot as 427 degrees Celsius and 801 Fahrenheit. On the dark side or the shadow inside the craters, the surface can be cold as minus 183 degrees Celsius and minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. Although most of Mercury is extremely dry, dry Scientists think there may be a small amount of water in the form of the ice poles of Mercury in areas that never receive direct sunlight. Venus Named after the Roman goddess of love, Venus is the only planet named after a female. Venus is the thick clouds reflect sunlight well, so Venus is very bright. When it is visible, Venus is the brightest object in the sky besides the sun and the moon. Because the orbit of Venus is inside Earth's orbit, Venus always appears close to the sun. When Venus rise, rises just before the sun rises, the orbit object is called the morning star. When it says sets after the moon sunsets it is called the evening star 
of the planets, Venus is the most familiar to Earth in size and density. Venus is also our nearest neighbor. The planet's interior structure is familiar to Earth with a large iron core and silicate mantle. But the resemblance between the two inner planets is that Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from Sun and the first planet beyond Earth's orbit. Mars is a quite a different planet from Earth and yet more simi similar than any other planet. Mars is smaller, colder, drier and has no appearance to have no life. But volcanoes are common to both of the planets. Surface features. Mars has mountains, canyons and other features similar to Earth. Some of these features are the amazing size. Uh, the Olympus Mounts is a shield volcano, similar to the volcanoes that make up the Hawaiian Islands. But the um, Olympus Mounts is also the largest mountain in the solar system. The Olympus Mounts is about 27 kilometers above the Martian surface and more and more taller than the Mount Everest. It's approximately three times taller than that. The volcano space is about the size of the state Arizona. Mars also has the largest canyon in the solar system, Wells Minerals. Thank you. Hope you like my presentation. Very nice, very nice. Uh... Shirish, so that's uh, you need to don't mute yourself. So because we'll be having questions from our audience, yes, in the so it's it's a detailed uh, representation of. Uh, uh, we have already questions already. Yes, uh, Sadhana, you can ask your question to Shirish. Namaskaram. Yes. The largest mountain in the solar system is Olympus Mount in the Mars. And which spacecraft has taken that and measured that that is the largest solar system, largest mountain in that solar system? Oh, I think, uh, no, I think the more than spacecraft, I think telescopes, so through telescopes, I think they... Um... Uh, actually, I don't know the answer for that. But I have a guess. Is there for mountains in that other planets also, like Venus, Mercury, yes. also yes, have the mountains? Yes, of course. Of course, yes. yes, yes. Because uh, we have seen mountain recently, the New Horizons. Uh, 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 just uh, we got the photo. How many of you watched the picture of Pluto? Pluto is filled with mountains. Then Titan, the Saturn's moon, it has a lot of mountains. A lot of planets have mountains. Yes, Ria has a question. Can you please tell Bri uh, shortly about the uh, outer planets also? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's basically they're the outer, uh, outer planets. I think she is asking about the exoplanets or something. Planets outside solar system or the outer planets are actually like the rest of the planets in the solar system. Saturn, which has rings, and which is Saturn. Basically the rest of the planets in the solar system. And they're not uh, that familiar to the inner planets, and they have lots of differences. I still haven't researched about them, okay. so I actually don't know that much about them. So we have Avinash who want to finish his presentation because he has one more slide to complete. 
that's a brilliant presentation shirish and uh, let's give a huge round of applause for shirish this is the first live stream of shirish oh, i think you have still have questions thank you Nisha, okay. Sadhana has one more question for you, uh, Shirish. Yes, Sadhana. Does all planets have the atmosphere? Uh, can you mention which the which are the planets have the atmosphere? And yes, so Earth has an atmosphere. Mars does not have that much. Uh, it basically doesn't have that much. It only has like a thin atmosphere, and it does not help it that much. So basically, you can also take like Mars also has one. Earth, Mars has one. I don't think Venus does. Venus has one. Uh, Venus has the one of the thickest atmosphere in the whole solar system. Oh. Does the outer planets have the atmosphere? Outer planets. Uh, I think the planets. I guess some does. The most planets have atmosphere, at least in bit. Uh, some does. The, I think the as they get bigger and bigger, they has the ability to grab hold of all these air molecules. So, or they they could become like icy planets. They could become like Jupiter, Saturn, or like the gas giants. So, yes. Even the Saturn's yeah. moons have atmosphere. Then Pluto has atmosphere. Okay, nice. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Avinash, you can finish your presentation. Hope your internet is fine. Then Rian, we're waiting for next uh, next screen. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, sorry for all these issues. Oh, See, I'm currently in my native at home. This is not at all a problem. But I'm in my native and I can't control rains. I'm not, I don't have the power to do so. So I'm not going to switch on my video. So <laughs> let me continue presenting because yeah. that's taking up most of my data. Okay. Yeah. Just a minute, huh? Uh, yeah, here we go. So where did I leave? Uh, where did I stop? I stopped at, uh, at capable of supporting a crew of six beyond low Earth orbit. Orion can last uh, can last up to twenty one days undocked, and up to six months docked. It is equipped with solar panels and Sanjay P star penetrating. Thank you. An automated docking system and glass cockpit interfaces modeled after those in the Boeing 787 Streamliner. A single AG-10 engine provides the spacecraft, spacecraft's primary propulsion, while eight R4D11 engines and six pods of custom reaction control uh, system engines developed by Airbus provide the aircraft's secondary propulsion. Although compatible with other launch vehicles, Orion is primarily designed to launch a top space launch system lo uh, rocket with a, a tower launch escape system. Now, last slide. Extra content three. So STS-125 or HST-SM-4, Hubble Space Telescope Servicing Mission 4, was the fifth and final space shuttle mission to the Hubble Space Telescope and the last solo flight of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. The launch of the Space Shuttle Atlantis took occurred on 11th May 2009 at 2.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and it landed at 11.39 a.m. on 24th May Eastern Daylight Time with a mission lasting a total of just 13 days. Space Shuttle Atlantis carried new, two new instruments to the Hubble Space Telescope, the Cosmic Origin Spectrograph, and the White, the white Field Camera 3. The mission also replaced a fine guidance sensor, six gyroscopes, and two battery unit modules 
to allow the telescope to continue to function at least through 2014. The crew, uh, the crew also installed a new thermal blanket insulating panels to provide improved thermal protection and a soft capture mechanism that would aid in the safety orbiting of the telescope by a robotic spacecraft at the end of its operational lifespan. The mission also carried an IMAX camera which, with which the crew documented the progress of the mission for the 2010 IMAX film, Hubble. Thank you. Any questions, feedback, please feel free. So I think a lot of uh, them asked uh, questions. On the, uh, if you guys have any questions, please ask. Okay. Done. Nice job, Avinash. Uh, so but Jago, I'm not done. I'm not done yet. Okay. There is a quiz. Quiz. Uh, yep. I've, I've created a quiz. Continue. So I'll give you guys a code. Yeah. Thank you, Rakshin. All, all that credit goes to me. All that quiz in that quiz dot com or yes, yes, quizzes dot com. Jagu. I'm ready for quiz. Yesterday Jagu. we had almost twenty participants. Nice. Jagu, mm -hmm. could you please uh, post this in the YouTube live stream? I want others also to answer. Yeah. Uh, anyone uh, in the watching can. Okay, I'll, I'll make yeah, it. because I even though I am on the live stream, I can't post. I have a children's account. Yeah, okay. She doesn't allow me to. Yeah, you can post to our student and you can actually uh, share the screen. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a minute. Let me just check. Oh, this one's. Yeah. Okay, so let me check how many of them are there. We've got 14. So, how many of you are yet to join? Quickly, quickly. Join, join, join. I'm waiting. Nice presentation, Anna. After many of the issues, you did it. Whoever has written under the username L, thank you so much. I'm going to share the screen now. Sure, just a minute, Jagu. So we just have two more minute. presentations. Next is uh, we have Ryan, then followed by Rashi. Mm -hmm. Yep. Please quickly start joining. Let's get it to 20, 30. Yep, yep, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> yep, we've got 21. But anyways, we'll wait for a minute. I have not seen the questions in the quiz. Don't no worry. To start, Sarana. I'm yet start, to start, start it. I'm yet to start. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to start and I'm going to stop presenting. We need to share the thing. I mean, I need to share the quiz screen so that all of them can watch. Hello? One minute. Okay. So, Ryan, okay, no, he's back. <laughs> Oh, the starter, the quiz started. You can put it on full screen. So. so you can click the questions. Uh, till, till everyone answers, we can read the questions. Click on to the questions. Avinash? Yes, Jagu. Click the questions. So I'll let the audience read the question. The first question, in which state NASA's Kennedy Space Center located? I think I know the answer. The next one, next question. Go, go, go. What is the full form of NASA? Okay, next one, third. 
Merit Island is a okay. Next, when was NASA established? So the fifth question. Full form of Orion. Okay. Next, where is the headquarters of NASA? Okay. Next, when did the STS one two five launch take place? Eighth question. What was the duration of the mission STS one two five? What did NASA succeed? How much crew is the Orion capable of supporting? Awesome. Let's see the leaderboard. So Riyans is leading the board. He is the next presenter as well. So Riyans is very fast as well. Seven thousand four sixty. Roar that rules at all. That's Rexon Sai. It's five five nine zero. Emma's tree. The Misha Vidya hitting the third, the bronze medal. Oh no, she held the silver. The mastery. Then we have someone called N N L H. There is no. Sorry. Who is the male? Need to put the tuck in the male jump by under that. I mean, she is struggling. Who is that? Who is that? Dan, Dan, Dan. I mean, if we can uh, keep the timer on. Uh, that's two minutes for them. Seventeen done. I'm ready. Sir, link our Lorda Hamatan. I swear. I think you need to check your internet connection. I swear. Hello, Chaudhary. Someone in YouTube. Hey, Avinash, you did not answer my question. Yeah, that's actually my friend, Sahnik. Yeah, I'll I'll answer his question right now. Sahu. So your question is, it was a quite presentation. Yeah, leave that. That's different. In NASA, can we get to see the rockets which may get launched in the future? Yes, we can. And also, can we get to see the on a rocket launching pad? Yes, but you cannot go up close. I mean, as you can finish this quiz, then you can answer because. Uh, oh yeah, sure, that'd be great. Because Sapnik, I'm. Sh I hope you're light. I hope yeah, you're you can right here. So because time up. So I'll end it in a minute. So that N N H L K is Sanjana. Oh, okay, okay. So this Hamishri team, she has attempted it twice. She's okay. attempting it from two devices, is what it's saying. Okay. Pranav, mm -hmm. Nivas. Can you can okay. end it? I can end it. Can end. end. Okay. So it's a good accuracy. I'm happy. I must say, I think this is the first, uh, the, the one we see is the first device. Second device is in the air plant. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. So, anyone wants to share feedback, please uh, send it personally to me. I'll wait here till 9 o'clock or 9.50. Okay. Please send your feedback personally. Nice. To me. So, that's a nice quiz to end the presentation, Avinas. Let's uh, and uh, Jagu, one more thing. Okay. If you want to like contact me or uh, send it per, uh, send your feedback personally, not through Zoom, I'll send my mail ID so you yes, can send it there. Or if you have any other queries, send it to my mail ID. I'll answer it within a few uh, within a few hours. Okay. What uh, what Sanjay? Hey, one down, down, down. <laughs> Next, uh, Riyans. Sanjay, after after Riyans presentation. Okay, done. Okay, I, let me introduce Riyans. Riyans is uh, from Avalon Heights uh, International School. Uh, he belongs to this company, Aerospace Now, and uh, he's. Grade eight, and the his topic is the largest galaxy of the world. He's one of the smartest chaps. Uh, uh, I uh, so this, we I get to meet lot of children in uh, air science online workshops. 
So Rianz is one of the smartest chaps I have uh, came across, and he jumped to researchers too, and he started uh, taking big space in whichever company he is in. I think he's just in second company now. Uh, he's taking a big role. Yes, uh, Rianz, you can start. So thank you so thank you so much. Rianz, your voice is kind of low. Down. It's coming. Is it coming now? Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Jagdish sir. So now I first coming to Sanjay's doubt, which he asked between Avinash's <laughs> presentation. Yeah. Why have I put the title as largest galaxy of the world? So this largest galaxy of the world is because I didn't want to put the name of the galaxy directly, as as like it would it would sound very lame and have doing the presentation. So it would this title I thought was a little exciting. I do not feel that n- normal sort of. That is why. I thought of putting this title. You can call it largest galaxy of the universe or anything what you feel. So now I'll start my screen share. Yes. So hello all. It's me Ryan Shora here studying in grade eight. I live actually in Mumbai and I study in Avalanche International School. So today I will present to you on the topic of largest galaxy of the world. So you might be wondering, why is this guy put this weird topic or this exciting topic which he told just now? <laughs> so it's just like to keep you up, appe- keep you appealed, and so I'm going to show you two pictures, and if you know the name of the galaxy, you can just guess it out and tell it to me. Yes, students ready. So he's going to show a picture. Tell which galaxy it is. It has the name also. Okay. You need to guess. There are two names. So I'm looking at the chat box eagerly. I see one one zero one. Rules that rules all. Correct, Rakshin. Absolutely yeah. correct. It's I see one one zero one. And by the way, saying uh, so, Hemastri. Second is Andromeda. Other is saying Andromeda. You got that says Yegu Galaxy. Yegu Galaxy or Galaxy? Yeah. It was IC one zero zero one, which is correctly guessed by Rakshin. So now I'll give you a overview. I'm gonna create. I'm gonna do a very short presentation. Not gonna take much of your time. Should only consist three main things: basic information about this, some history about it, and some fun facts. So first, moving on to some basic information. So, so what type of galaxy is it? Because you might be wondering if it's a galaxy, what type of galaxy it is. So it's a super giant galaxy and it's a elli- elliptical in shape. So yesterday, someone told about the types of galaxies. So it's in that there's this elliptical type of galaxy. Which cluster does it, does it belong to? It belongs to the cluster Abel twenty 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 nine. Which constellation does it belong to? It belongs to the constellation Virgo. Virgo. Number of stars. It has ten trillion star, hundred trillion stars. You can see the amount of zeros it has in it. So, <laughs> this is also an approximate value. I don't know the exact count. No one knows the exact count, actually. Please stop annotating. What is this size? So it starts from twenty two thousand ten. Light years and exceeds up to thirty nine more light years, thirty nine thousand more light years. So it is very large, as you see, like thousand light years. Thousand also is a large number, and light years is also large. So it's too large. Next distance from the Earth, it's approximately two billion light years away from the Earth. Next size in comparison of the Milky Way, it is fifty times as. Bigger than that of the Milky Way, so like 50 Milky Ways approximately can fit into that one galaxy. Next, we're going to know some history about it. Who discovered it? When was it discovered? Just some basic history. So, when do you think was it discovered? So it is 19 June 1970. It's very, it's a very recent discovery. Is if you see, only 50 years have gone by. Next. 
an astronomer from which country founded it's germany a german astronomer and next the name william herschel so this william herschel was just it is actually a accidental discovery which was done he was just drawing through his telescope he was hovering around space where he found this weird creature this weird thing in this so then he zoomed in and found out about it now the last part of my presentation which is fun facts so first it is said that there is a black hole in this galaxy whose which is whose name is given as pks 1509 plus 059 however this is not a confirmed thing it is just observed we don't know if it is there or not it's just a theory and you would be shocked to hear that what i actually told you did not know what is observing at that time galaxies were still believed to be nebulae of the milky way it was lot like uh, because till that time we didn't have galaxies as large as what we see like m86 which you saw in that picture was also not that large in compared to the milky way but this was 50 times large so he had to wonder about it and get to know that they were not nebulae of the milky way there were separate things in the universe and last as the stars of the end of the life lives so this means this actually can reduce in size and vanish so it it needs to collide with other galaxies as its moving speed is pretty fast so it needs to collide with smaller galaxies otherwise it will eventually fade away and the galaxy this largest galaxy of the world will not be there so it is basically selling that it basically tells that like how milk it says that milky way and andromeda are going to because just are going to co- co- collide in some 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 point of time so this also says the same thing it has to collide with younger galaxies because the it is a very pretty old galaxy so the stars have reached the end of their lives so as they have reached the end of their lives so the galaxy needs to collide with other galaxies so that it becomes large and the size is remains that the stars are redeemed new stars come into the galaxy yeah you need to share your percentage that's so now i have a quiz on quizzes.com whose link i will post post okay next quiz i am like excited guys <laughs> ready quiz time yeah i'll just post the link i will put it in uh, this thing as well Yes. Yeah, YouTube live also. Yeah, so did you post the link? Uh, didn't you get it, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, no, I'm just copying it. I'm just putting it in YouTube. You can share your screen, Arya. Yes, yes. So now we have sixteen participants. People are actually popping in. Yeah. We have sixteen. People are joining. I'll wait for some time because if people from the YouTube live stream yes, yes, want yes. to join or not, I guess now first of all. Are you sure Arya has joined from two devices? Hmm. Okay. Now you can just share the. Uh, I think we can start. How many we have? Nineteen. Nineteen. Children, twenty-seven entries. Sir, people are here. You can join all twenty-seven of you. Quickly. As soon as twenty comes, you can start. Twenty. Start. No, no. I swear, yeah, he's talked in from three times. <laughs> That is why I'm wondering. That's okay. Go ahead. Parallel, parallel. Quickly see the questions. Pick the questions. 
How many times larger than Milky Way is IC one one zero one? First question: forty times, hundred times, thousand times, fifty times. Second question: in which century uh, was IC one one zero one discovered? Okay, nineteen twenty one, twenty eighteen. Then third one. This is the third question. From which country is William Herschel? France, Germany, USA, Russia. Fourth one: the name of assumed black hole. PKS, PKS, BKS, BKS. There's one plus minus plus twister. This is a twister. Then, which type of galaxy is IC one one zero one? Super giant, elliptical, only one, only two, both one and two, none. Nice. Now let's see the leaderboard. Ah, Srijit, Madhyesh. If Madhyesh gets it right, this one right, he hundred hundred percent. Clear, man. <laughs> oh, green get that right. Ah, just sorry, Parawala. So Srijit is leading the board right now. Yes. So twenty-two players. How many finished? Twelve done. Twenty-two, twelve were done. Twelve done. Twelve done. Okay. As soon as say twenty, it comes. You can complete. Fifteen. So there's uh, Kashika also told me she's preparing uh, quiz. So we'll have one more quiz. Ashwarya is trying. I think she is new to this thing. She is trying to <laughs> explore. Some people are doing it more than one time. Okay. Anyway, so that's like Chijit, Anish, and Madhyesh. I think that they constantly these three are on top. I think you can. Uh, how many are yet to be done? Eighteen done. Two more to be done, then I'll end. Okay. Because people are joining. Darsh has just joined, I think. Aishwarya is, I think she is new to this, so she must be like picked twice or thrice. Twenty-six. Anish, N N S, Harijit. Okay. Dan, we can. Satya ki is ahead. Satya ki is from Isha Vidya. Ah, <laughs> I think the last question. I think they are okay. Done. We can close it. We can close it. Wait, wait. Another, another bus coming. Yeah, it's only. I think we can close. Finish that. Let Let's wait for just. Okay, let's wait. Oh, twenty nine players now. Thirty players. Thirty. Thirty one. Thirty one. <laughs> Are you boys? Hope you are not joining again and again. I think now only like I think it, it got posted and no 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 Sanjay is Sanjay is just joined. I think because of some internet glitches or something. No no no. I think it's already nine fifteen. Uh, uh, I like it. I like it. Close it because there is one more person is waiting to four percent. Let's see who is the who is topping the thing. Is that right? Ah, that something is today. It was actually we saw that it was first. It was uh, yeah Satya ki, then it was Rijit, and then this one more. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Any Jagdish sir? Any comments on the presentation? It's nice. Ah, uh, I told you know you guys all are uh, becoming uh, uh, mastered in solo presentations. So now uh, we will have a separate day for group presentations. And students, if you have any questions, you can type it in chat box. Uh, so we got uh, uh, responses from Sadhana says super presentation. Sanjay always doubt boy this boy. Kashika, you can start. Okay, let's give on a huge round of applause for Riyansh. He's becoming very really late now. Yeah, that's the first uh, uh, live stream by Riyansh. We'll have uh, more soon in coming days. Okay, thank you, Riyansh. Now let's bring Kashika in. So let me introduce Kashika. So Kashika is a grade nine student of K. V. Ashok Naha, and her topic is something futuristic or currently trending topic: the three D printing for space industry. Yes, Kashika, you can start.
Rồi, anh đi anh ngủ rồi. À. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, um, start my presentation now. Uh, while presenting, I'll probably uh, lose my camera. Okay. Uh, so my topic is a bit futuristic, as Star said. Um, I'll begin my presentation and end it real quick because it's already getting late. And I'll have a short read really three questions quiz at the end. So hope you guys don't mind that. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So, right. right. So, my topic is about 3D printing in space. So, 3D printing, as I said, it is an exciting field at the moment. Um, it is something that can open up a millions and millions of stuff in the space exploration field. When we are traveling to moon or Mars, there's so many things that we can do with 3D printing. It, it is just amazing. And we'll be moving to the next slide now. And so before I get into 3D printing to space, and you know, I, I want to begin with an introduction. What is 3D printing? So 3D printing, uh, imagine it's like layer by layer. So if you have a hot glue, like hot glue gun, and you just press it down, and then you make a layer and layer out of it. You know, add layer and layer on top of it. So that's 3D printing. But there's like a million types of 3D printing. There's like additive manufacturing. That's a part of 3D printing. And there's like um, the fusion bed reactor, the fused filament fabrication, just a bunch of 3D printing material, uh, types of 3D printing, but we're not going to go too deep into that. So let's just like go over the surface and then see about introduction to 3D printing in space. So, uh, you know, uh, we are going to talk about this. Um, we are going to talk about this made in space. Like you can see the top right picture, top right picture. You can actually see a uh, 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 person called Made in Space. So basically Made in Space is a company which um, are working to so hard towards the field of space exploration of having 3D printing and uh, giving that to, uh, so they have a lot of partnerships with NASA and then we'll be discussing about this uh, quite a bit in the, uh, quite a bit now. And so I hope everyone can see my screen. So now let's get to this topic. So whenever there is like ISS, so I, as you can see, there are like quite a bit of text in the slides. What basically does those text mean? So, um, so what NASA does basically is when going to the ISS, it's like a camping trip to them because it's not a permanent home where, ast where astronauts are going to stay. Stay right. So that uh, so what what their main uh, goal is now is to bring everything because you're not going to. So uh, you can see the quote right down there. So better to be safe than sorry. What I mean by this is that, uh, in fact, like NASA sends up to like uh, 7,000 pounds of uh, the spare parts that ISS needs every year. So what basically happens is that most of the time the astronauts do not use the spare parts, but they just keep it, they just store it. There's like cargo missions going every every uh, every now and then to the ISS to re, uh, reload the spare, uh, the spare parts. But Technically, they don't use it, but the thing is that uh, there are like 29,000 pounds of hardware or replacements that is going on the ISS. So that we don't need Mars. So one thing when we're traveling to space or any space mission, we try to reduce mass because we are reducing mass less amount of fuel, less amount of fuel, less number of cost. So that is like the main goal. And um, so basically, you could see in the picture, you know, the upper part, you could see like a bit of tools. So this was 3D printed. I think I think you can see where I'm going with it. So when you're like about like 200 miles away from Earth, so you know you want to make you want to make sure that like you all all these supplies, the, all the necessary supplies, like uh, any any bolts or any cables or any uh, uh, nails, you know anything, all the essential tools that you need. So as you can see, NASA says like better to be safe than sorry. So uh, it means that. Uh, so that a vast majority of parts that is like in the ISS at the moment are never used, but we are keeping them for safety. So when we are launching, we would like to decrease the cost of how much payload that we are taking into space. 
so it will uh, you know it will eventually go to decrease in the number of costs we need so so i think uh, that was an introduction to what it is the so 3d printing in the iss what has been done so far in the iss so there's like a bunch of topics that we could discuss here so uh, in the iss the first thing it was tested out was the fused filament fabrication method uh it was actually it is actually used by most of the amateurs uh, here but um that was actually the first trial that was ha that happened 3d printing in microgravity maybe that that seems like a more suitable topic isn't it and but well, actually what nasa is trying to do is now to recycle the uh, materials that they are, that they are using to uh, to 3d print the uh, things over and over again that we'll see in, in a bit so uh, so the first thing there are like initiatives that's going on in nasa so there have been three initi initiatives as of now. So there's like 3D printing and uh, there's like three things. So 3D printing in zero G, there is microgravity technology demonstration mission. And third was the additive manufacturing facility and three is refactoring in space. So these three initiatives by NASA on the space station is something so interesting that we will not, uh, we'll go a bit more in, onto it. And, and actually here, I would like to share this topic and this picture with you all. And the thing is, um, no, the thing is that uh, the thing this stacks like structure you could see is actually called uh, the FAM2 satellite launcher. So as you might know, a lot of CubeSats or you know, you can in this sense you can call it FAM2 sats, like really, really small sats, really, really small sats. They could what actually happens is that um, they are launched from this thing. So there has been contest held in a couple of years ago uh, by. Uh, by a startup company who, who are initiated with NASA. And they want, they actually uh, held a contest between all the university students among, and then they wanted to see who comes up with the best tool, best 3D, uh, you know, 3D printed tool that like best application that could provide the best application to, uh, to the ISS. So um, a lot of CubeSats or Frontus Labs are Just actually the long. presentation become back. Oh, okay. I think we need to reshare it. Yeah. I thought it was only fine. Okay, Sanjay, thank you very much. Yes, Sanjay. I get that. Are you able to see now? Uh, not yet. Okay. I hope I think you can able to see now. I can see your, yeah, it's, it's like the screening, like sharing has stopped. Yeah, now it started. So okay, it's, I mean, it's there. go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you, sir. So these are, so actually you can see the image. So there's like, you can see these little things, like the green stuffs in between the stacks. There are FAM2 satellites. So this was actually sent, uh, which was made on Earth and then sent to the ISS. And they, they are still used. Actually what happens is that they, you can see this rod-like structure. When they are released, these satellites will just go into space. They will go into their orbit or so uh, actually ISS is also used as a launch pad, a launch station for tiny cube satellites. So you know, let's go a, 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 a bit deep, deep about these three initiatives and then we'll go into some, some very interesting topic that I think everyone will find enjoyable. So now 3 printing in, uh, you know, zero G technology demonstration. So you can see astronaut right there. He, so what happened was in 2014, uh, actually, uh, NASA and it initiated the startup company called uh, Made in Space, uh, used a 3D printer, you know, for two rounds operations, like from 2014 to 2016. So in 2014, the first 3D printer was actually sent to the ISS. And pretty exciting. And then, uh, you know, it actually investigated a lot of things, you know, how a 3D printer works, how it affects the material in, in the microgravity environment, or there's something, uh, there's also a method called melt deposition. Uh, melt deposition additive manufacturing. Uh, so it uses like a uh, polymer material. This is sort of common in, in the arena of printing. And we uh, actually they want to see how actually this effect, the microgravity environment affects this material. So actually, if I go to the beginning of my presentation, you could see. Uh, so this is not the ISS, right? We all know. And this is something called the Wormuth Comet or the Zero G Comet. You know, um, it it mimics, it stimulates the Zero G environment by doing a parabolic flight. And they actually tested out this first 
in the uh, in this vomit comment. You can call it. I actually like to call it the vomit comment. And um, and then and then it was sent to space. You know, uh, testing is very important before sending anything to space. Right. And so, so actually, what was uh, it used something called uh, plastic? You know, plastic is very common, and you know. Uh, the, the plastic, this material that they use is very common that it, most MHS do on the earth itself. So, And they, as I said, they use the fused filament fabrication process. You know, uh, you know it, what happens is that uh, it, it does a layer by layer, you know, to create a three-dimensional object. Uh, it, it's like, a little, uh, as I said, like the hot glue explanation, like it's like a, uh, it's like a, it's a little like a hot glue gun. Like, you know, you just put that up and then you make layer by layer and layer in until you create a 3D, uh, 3D dimensional figure, 3D dimensional space. So um, so what happens is there's like a bit of nozzle in the 3D printer. What happens is that that heats, you know, the plastic, the material, and then uh, you know, and then it, it makes the layer by layer, uh, and it creates the layer by layer process and then it comes to three, three, three dimensional. So this was the initiative that was took, took by, uh, I, uh, NASA and the Made in Space. So 2014 was an important year in, in, at the International Space Station. And we have the additive manufacturing. And also speaking about this Made in Space, so you can see this batch here. And uh, NASA has this, um, not, not only NASA, actually every space industry has this obsessed, uh, obsessive thing of actually making a patch, you know, making a patch, you know, for every mission. It's actually really good, you know, having a trademark for this exact mission. All these tools that you could see in these images were 3D printed. Actually, you could make an SCL file here on Earth, and then you could forward the file to the astronauts on the ISS, and then they could print it out with the 3D printer that is in the International Space Station. Right? Uh, and now, actually, the second initiative was the editor manufacturing facility. Editor manufacturing is a part of 3D printing. So, so, um, so what this was actually. Um, a, a experiment that actually was created to see that how a high density polythene uh, it's actually a material that is most commonly used on earth but i wanted to see how it works on an uh, extremely simulated microgravity environment but i actually mentioned in the vomit format they te test these and things but and then they send it to ice then why do they want to send this thing to ice if you can see that in the uh, in the in the slide the parabolic slide which mimics the microgravity environment it doesn't go for too long, right? It's just like uh, 40, 45 seconds straight up and then 45 seconds straight down. When you go straight down, you feel the uh, microgravity environment, right? And it's not too long. And they wanted to see a long-term uh, method. So they cannot create a 3D printing, 3D printed material in 45 seconds. It takes way longer than that. And, and the, there is also the fact that we might see how to uh, increase the speed process of 3D printing. So what happened is that, um, so I did a manufacturing, so uh, NASA actually used this AMF, to, this AMF that is the additive manufacturing facility to actually investigate the materials that, and all the functional parts that is like happening or the tools that you see right there uh, happening on the ISS, including actually an antenna part of the ISS was 3D printed. Can you believe it, 3D printed? You just make some material and then you just create the material right down there. So, um, so this was actually uh, made to NASA. Uh, NASA took this initiative so that they could see how different materials mimicked in the ISS in microgravity, in long-term microgravity method. So, and then they multi. Uh, so that's why they see the multi-material 3D printer for polymers that are like commonly used. So, and that's what NASA did. And then. Um, so there's actually more things that, you know, they use free flying robots, uh, robots for this research. And there's like, um, this was one of the initiatives this additive manufacturing testing. So the main objective was just to see the density of different materials, how it is affected in the microgravity environment. And the next thing, which is extremely, extremely important, recycling in space. Um, one of the things when we go into space is that we, the materials that we have is that uh, it's it's really something that we have to use. It's like ISRU. What ISRU basically means in situ resource utilization. To use what is there to basically live off the land. And we have the materials there are not um, everlasting, long lasting. It's like, you know, 
water. It's not, it's there, but you know, it's not going to last forever. And we, we have to be really careful about recycling, you know, you might almost know like, you know, they actually recycle the urine and do, you know, every sweat, every water droplet on the ISS to convert it into pure drinkable water. It's the same thing like that. Recycling in space is very, very important. So um, there's actually a refabricated unit. Uh, there's something called the refabricated unit that was sent to the ISS. You can see in the top image, this one. This is the refabricator that was sent to the ISS. What it basically does is that you can see the tools. It, the tools goes there and then it heats up and then you know it converts it into material that could actually be recycled and then used for 3D printing again. You know, it can be recycled. You know, that's pretty amazing. It's like a clo uh, you know closely manufacturing loop. Uh, so so basically, in the long duration mission, such as such as we go to the moon or Mars. If we go to Mars, we're just going to take some amount of material, 3D print stuff, all of that. And then when we find that stuff is not uh, usable again, we don't need that anymore. We just take that out, put this in the in this, um, 3D fabricator, and then recycle the material and create new things out of it. So even though when we make a long-term uh, settlement on the moon, it's, it's going to be really fast. And that's something uh, something about the recycling in space. Now I'm going to transition to a new different topic. And you might think, I was talking about 3D printing first, and why am I suddenly going to space work? Uh, so the thing is that, um, and actually this was a contest held by NASA, put for thought. But let's not know, first astronauts okay, used to have their food from tubes like this, and then they got fruits and ices like the uh, uh, in the ISS, you can see astronauts do eat common food like us, just from packages, not from a plate, and everything will float around if you eat from plate. And so I'm going to go to a very interesting topic after this, something called um, bioprinting. I'm not, so I'm just going to give drop out a little surprise now. And you can see a pizza right here, right? It's a pizza. This was 3D printed. This was 3D, 3D printed under six minutes. And just, you know, you just have to, to put the right material and then you get a, a 3d printed pizza you don't have to bake it you don't have to do anything but you know say uh, you know science nerds like us would probably say uh, you know do the computational model and then do you know bioprint this entire thing rather than just order pizza but this is going to help in the future of space exploration a lot um, more than we can ever imagine so the thing is that um what they do is that they make paste you know, a face like structures with you know, bulk proteins, you know, carbohydrates, all these powder, all these things like dehydrated powder, all these um, materials that could be taken to Mars or the moon or the ISS. Itself. But ISS will probably, you know, wear out in a few days. But actually, this new exciting things coming up, such as Gateway. Gateway is going to make an establishment between the Earth and the moon. That means we can be in the orbit. That's pretty exciting, but you know, let's go back to the topic now. There is this, um, when we just add water and oil to these uh, bulk protein or the carbohydrate powders, all these dehydrated powder ingredients, that, that's like, you know, it's like chemically inactive. And then we just have to add water and oil so that it, we can make it alive again, you know, to put it in simple stuff, simple stuff. Actually, insects and algae could be, you know, uh, could be ground up to powders, you know, made into powders, algae, and insects, you know, cricket. There's like so many things available, it's just cricket powders. You can buy it off Amazon if you'd like to eat insects. And, you know, <laughs> you can do something like that. And then, um, and usually, actually, there's flour made of dried insects, such as, you know, mealworms. They, are, they call it mealworms. You can actually take insects, grasshoppers, crickets. You can make, you know, when you're making your chapati and stuff, you just put uh, insect flour insects but you know if you want to become an astronaut you know go go on to uh, you want to stay in mars or the moon just you have to adjust to these things. so um there's something called so 3d printing um so this 3d printed world actually could be tailored to meet the nutritional needs and case difference of every individual every crew member in the mission in any mission the mission to the moon mission to the mars so, you know, a diverse menu could be created with, you know, minimal waste. That's exciting. And actually, you could see how this is actually a, uh, this is not a food, actually, but this is, this is bioprinted. When I mean bioprinted, it's not just related to food. But in this concept, in, in this presentation, we'll just, you know, narrow, down, narrow that down to food. 
but actually it's also used for you know we could take a couple of tissues and then grow a heart grow a kidney that's interesting if you want to do a if someone got an injury on mars you know if you want to do a heart transplant you could just 3d print the heart with bunch of tissue that's that's exciting for me for not just for me everyone you know if you are seeing this it, this was um, this is something called a bolar cell bolar cell you know heart transplant from yes um you could just take a couple of the cells and group a uh, kidney stone you know kidney and you know these stuff are exciting bioprinting just doesn't mean that you know make work but in this context we just use for for now but bioprinting also means that you can take bunch of tissues and then you can grow hearts and you know you can grow human organ organ system you can just create an entire new organ system that's exciting so um i like to you know end the presentation now you know uh you know i i saw the chat box and you know, thank you for the awesome words and a timeline so a timeline always works so we are done with the presentation now if you have any questions feel free to ask in the chat or leave the chat yes. and then we'll uh, transition to a short break done 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 so if you have any questions you can uh, ask children and we have a quiz also uh, yes. ashika you uh, made a quiz ready uh, uh, yes ಹೌದು I think the Kahoot is actually making up. So is it okay if you just don't go ahead with the quiz? Okay. The okay. quiz, but... Okay. So you can ask any questions if you have uh, later. I think it's better than allowing you. Ah, yes, I can see your screen. I can't, uh, it's actually a quiz that I uh, prepared, but it's not allowing me to start the quiz. Click, click, start quiz. I don't think it's allowing me to start the quiz. You need to click the start quiz. Should we just go without the quiz? Is it okay? Or I don't no. want to disappoint anyone. Click, click, uh, start quiz. I'll skip. But in the meantime, if there are any questions. Yeah, if you have any questions uh, later to 3D printing, you can ask. Even Vaish Shastra has a... Uh, we teach uh, children how to 3D print something. Uh, and a lot of st uh, college students have done this 3D printing uh, course here. So soon we'll be introducing it to school students as well. But uh, it's like a hands-on workshop. So I'm waiting for the corona to get down. We are building a lot of new modules. Okay. Talk like I don't know how to do it.
Okay, nice. Uh, so, students, so she is facing troubles in uh, posting the quiz link. So, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask directly Kashika. Okay. Done. Nice presentation, Kashika. That's like a futuristic technology. And uh, uh, from my perspective, next five years, every house will have its uh, have a 3D printer. Every mixy TV will come out 3D printer. Like that, you all will start uh, telling. Okay. Uh, let's give a huge round of applause for Akashika. That's the first uh, live stream by Akashika. We'll have so much, so many more coming soon. And we have uh, more than 20 audience uh, constantly uh, watching here. Then we have a uh, live stream going on. You can get to watch it anytime. Now. Thank you, Akashika. Let's go. Okay, that's the last presentation of the day. We had Srija, Tabinash, Sanjana, Shri, Riyans, and Kashika. And next week, we'll be coming with the six more new young researchers presenting. And I will also planning to take few from uh, Isha Vidya because we have, we have a lot of talents in, in Isha Vidya as well. Okay, until then, see you. Bye bye. Jagu Manji, then. Bye. 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 Bye.